I do have skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. I've been having debates with people over the dinner table about the obligation to vote. Mm -hmm. Where do I find the obligation? Um, you don't have to vote, but you have to be enrolled. What I mean is, by uh, registered. Yeah, register. The obligation to register. You have to be. It's it, technically illegal to not be on the roll. It's it, technically illegal to not be on the roll. Yeah. It's a $200 so, fine. I thought it was $1,000 for three months imprisonment, but it must no, have changed. It's actually only $100 for the first offence and $200 for the second. Okay, so what, where's the legal obligation to, to, to register? Vote. To. To register. Uh, I think I just said that. Yeah, but what, where do I find it? What legislative act? Uh, well, I've certainly got it written down on things here. Yeah. Uh, all of these, uh, any piece of paper here will have the, that written the, on it. The reason I ask is because back in, I think it was 2012. I'm not a lawyer. I can't get into a big debate about it with you and prove anything to you. But it's to say, something so, to say something's legal, you must have legal training. Otherwise, if, if you're saying something's illegal without knowing the law that substantiates well, what Well, then you can't know if it's here, legal or not. You yeah. must enrol. Yeah. You must enrol yeah, if okay. you are New Zealand. Are you aware system. that must means may or may not? So I'm using, New, uh, well, not New Zealand, Butterworth's Law Dictionary because it doesn't actually have the word must in there and defined. But I'll point you to the Black's Law Dictionary. Um, this is the sixth edition, abridged. And here, you'll notice it says the word must. Okay, must. This word, like the word shall, is primarily of mandatory effect. In that sense is used in the antithesis to may. Therefore it's the opposite of may. This meaning of the word is not the only one, and is often used in a merely directory sense, and consequently is a synonym for the word may, not only in the permissive sense of that word, but also in the mandatory sense, which sometimes, or which it sometimes has. Okay, so must literally can either mean the opposite of may, or when it's in a directory sense or a directional sense, saying you must or must not do something, then it's exactly the same as may or may not. It's a synonym for the word may. Okay, so for those that aren't legally trained like the beautiful woman at Pack and Save, if you actually do your homework and figure out the legal meanings of the words. Okay. You are, are you aware system? that must means may or may not in a direction? I think you're taking sense? something out on me which is entirely inappropriate and I'm not a lawyer. Okay, so I've only asked I you for the obligation. I don't even know why you're asking me to explain plain English. It's, it's not really English. Not my, it's not English? No, That's it's in legal. It's, if anything's written in legislature, it's legalese. It's not English. You'll find that no, it's not English. Yes, it's legalese. They wrote books on it. I'll hand you back. It's not, really not, it's not English. No, it's not English? No, it's legal. It's, if anything's written in legislature, it's legalese. It's not English. Hello, can I help you? Yeah, it's not English. How Thank you. you. Okay, so as a side note, I thought to myself, 
I wonder how many people have actually been prosecuted. I mean, you get the fear and the coercion. You could be fined a hundred bucks and then two, uh, three hundred. The chick said, turns out it's two hundred, or up to two hundred for a second or reoccurring offences, as they call it. Um, so I thought to myself, how many people have been prosecuted? Quick Google search if you go looking for how many people have been prosecuted for not registering as a voter. Um, and I came up with this, uh, an information, uh, Freedom of Information Act request from a Liam Stonely dated October 6, 2014. And it states this, it says, Dear Electoral Commission, could you please provide me with the following data from the 2011 general election. One, how many people were not enrolled as prescribed by section 82 of the Electoral Act 1993 immediately after the election and, oh, and by the way, little sweetie at pack and save, that's what you should be telling me, the Electoral Act 1993 under section 82. All right, anyway, two, how many people of those were prosecuted under section 82 subsection 7a and three how many people were prosecuted under section 82 sub, uh, subsection 7b could you also please provide any reasoning why if any were not prosecuted lastly could you please provide the number of wasted votes and examples of why they became wasted yours faithfully liam stonely and then um, it would appear, after not hearing any response within a month, he then sent another email through to them, November 6, 2014. Dear Electoral Commission, you have not provided me with a response to my Official Information Act request by law. This should have been done by the 4th of November, 2014. Please reply urgently to this follow-up email with either the information sought or indicating a time when that will be completed by... If I do not hear back from you this week, I will be complaining to the Ombudsman. Yours faithfully, Liam Stonely. November 6th, that same day, from Christina Temmel of the Electoral Commission, responded with, Dear Mr Stonely, thank you for your emails of 5 October and 6 November 2014, requesting the following information about the 2011 general elections under the Official Information Act 1982. 1. How many people were not enrolled as prescribed by Section 82 of the Electoral Act 1993 immediately after the election? And 2. How many of those were not prosecuted under Section 82, Subsection 7a? And how many were, were, were prosecuted under Section 82, Subsection 7b? 4. Reasoning why, if any, were not prosecuted? And 5. The number of wasted votes and examples of why they became wasted. Apologies for the delay in replying. 205,153 people were not enrolled as at election day 2011. 205,000. Okay? To put that in perspective, there's 4 million people in New Zealand. So, what's that? 5% of the entire population was not even enrolled a lot of faith in the government out there. To the best of our knowledge, no one was prosecuted. I'll repeat that, okay, for those people listening, just to go with that coercion of the chick at pack and save. To the best of our knowledge, and this is the Electoral Commission here, no one, no one was prosecuted for not being enrolled to vote. A conviction for failing to enrol requires that the prosecution prove that the person knowingly and willfully fails to enrol. The fine is $100. The cost of pursuing a prosecution would be high, and for that reason we prefer to use those resources to encourage people to enrol rather than pursue enforcement and referral to police for prosecution. In other words, it costs them far more to pursue, what, 205000 So that's $2 million worth of fines. It would cost them far more than the appropriations or crown revenue obtained from that. It would cost them a lot more to prosecute for each police. To, and it would tie up the system immensely. 
slapping 205,000 prosecutions, even 10% of that, 20,000, would really chew up the system um, and slow everything down. So it's just not a law they can enforce feasibly or fiduciary. If they have a fiduciary responsibility, so those things, it's just unenforceable. You have asked for information about wasted boats. This is a general term that can mean different things to different people. So I have provided information that covers all possibilities. Please let me know if I have not covered what it is you were really interested in. Wasted votes is a term used for the number of party votes received by any party that does not win at least 5% of the total number of party votes or win at least one electoral seat. The threshold for the allocation of listed seats at the 2011 general election was 75,493 votes, or 3.37%. Information, or informal votes, are votes that cannot be counted because either the voter has not marked the voting paper or has marked it in such a way that their voting intention is not clear. Both the candidate vote and the party vote are, separated, are separately considered in 2011, there were 19,872 informal party votes and 53,332 informal candidate votes. Disallowed votes are votes that cannot be counted because, for example, the voter was not enrolled or not enrolled in the electorate for which they voted. The vote was received late, it was a dual vote, or the voter has failed to complete the special vote declaration form in accordance with the legal requirements in 2011. 21,653 party votes were disallowed and 53,223 candidate votes were disallowed. Wow, shocking. Further information about party votes, informal votes and disallowed votes is available at the following locations on our website. You have the right under section 28. Subsection 3 of the Official Information Act to complain to the Ombudsman if you are not satisfied with the response to your request. Your sincerely, uh, Kirsten Temmel, Electoral Commission. So, long story short, what that basically means is unless they can prove that you knowingly and willingly um, fail to not register, and they can prove that, um, they ain't going to prosecute you. And according to that, out of 205,000 possible prosecutions, they didn't do any. Which to me means it's not something they enforce. So, as to me, um, I'm not registered uh, because I have paperwork from the Registry Commission. Well, when I sent this letter off to the Electoral Commission back in 2011 or 2012, I told to them that I would be more than happy, it's just called it a conditional acceptance, I said to them I would be absolutely thrilled to bits, no problem at all, to register my person as a voter or elector, um, if they could provide me the obligation where I'm obliged to do so. Um, now, I also gave them a failure to respond time, I got no response whatsoever. Now, as silence is considered passive acquiescence, and I said to them, if I don't hear a response back, they will be taken that there is no obligation to register. Um, and they let that stand. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm still, I, I can't make a fully informed and voluntary registration unless I uh, am fully informed of the cause and nature as to what it is I'm getting into, you know. So I'm more than happy to do anything someone tells me to do if they can show me where the obligation is. Um, we're not talking about a social contract or anything that's in hairy fairy land. I'm talking about some bit of paper that I've signed that says I'm going to be happy to do this. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So all of those that knowingly and willingly, uh, I think as they put it here, um, haven't registered uh, because they never do or because it's a matter of principle or whatever, they're perfectly entitled not to. Um, and... As with anything, the onus probandi or the burden of proof lays on the person making the claim. So if the police or the electoral commission want to say, well, you knowingly and willingly didn't do this, well, I 
when, when you say you would be happy to do something and the conditional acceptance, should they be able to provide the evidence that I'm obliged to, then that means that you're not refusing, you're not willingly or what not, not registering, there's a, a matter that's in dispute or something that's up for discussion. So until you get your answers, why should you do anything? Um, remember that it's supposedly a voluntary society um, and under the New Zealand, uh, or under the, the United Nations or the Declaration of Human Rights, 1953 I think it is, you're not obliged to be held um, or to join any party or any group of people. So you can't be compelled to join their club. Um, so yeah, there's, there's lots of ways you can attack it. Um, myself, I'm more than happy to do anything and just give a conditional acceptance. Um, that way you stay in honour, you don't refuse anything. Um, and yeah, you leave it up to the person saying someone else has to do something to prove it. That's the way it should be, be self-responsible, self-governing, okay? Anyway, um, a lot of the a lot of the trolls out there will probably give me shit, but so be it. I really don't give a fuck. Opinions vary, and uh, anybody that actually knows me knows what I'm like and has nothing but the utmost respect for what I do. So, uh, yeah. To all the trolls out there, fuck you. To all of the decent people out there, please, by all means, use your common sense, use your practical, logical thought process, use facts and evidence to, to make your judgments. Don't go by a belief absent in effect. Um, that's all I ever can, you know, in my humble opinion, tell anybody. Anyway, much love to you all. See ya.